Hello, everyone, and welcome to day 24 of Try Hack Me's Advent of Cyber. My name is Katie, also known as Insider PhD, and I make videos teaching people how to get into bug bounty hunting, web security, API hacking, and all that fun stuff. And I'm so excited to be doing day 24, and this is something I know nothing about, and that is what I always appreciate about Advent of Cyber. So today we're going to be talking about communication protocols. So let's start out with the story. In Wareville, the townspeople started to frown. A problem with smart lights all over the town was Socmus ruined. The chances were zero because they knew the glitch was their hero. The city of Waresville has invested in smart lights and heating, ventilation and air conditioning. Oh, it was so easy to control the lights and heating remotely. Following the recent incidents, McSkiddy started monitoring the smart devices communication protocols. Not long after the lights and heating were up and running, Mayor Malware figured out how these devices were controlled and sabotaged them. Luckily, McSkiddy was one step ahead and picked up the malicious commands that had been sent. Can you help McSkiddy figure out which commands were sent? We can then use these findings to update the device's configuration and save the day. So today we're going to be learning about the MQTT protocol and specifically how to use Wireshark to analyze that traffic and how we might start to reverse engineer a networking protocol. Smart devices make our lives very easy. We no longer need to physically move and turn on or off a switch to control them. With smart HVAC systems, we can maintain the temperature of our homes to ensure they're not too cold or not too hot when we come home from outside. Smart vacuum cleaners can clean our house where we work on other things or go out for dinner. Many smart devices come with apps that allow us to communicate them using our mobile phones. Even better, since these devices can be controlled remotely through apps and interfaces connected to the internet, we can make their designs more minimalistic and aesthetically independent, and the need for adding switches and controls on the device itself is minimized. While they may make our lives easier, most smart devices need a network connection to provide control to the users. Many smart devices are connected over the internet, hence the term Internet of Things or IoT, which from a security point of view means that anyone can potentially take control of these devices. We can limit the exposure of these devices by adding security controls such as network isolation, authentication mechanisms. Still, if we fail to do so, the results can be catastrophic. However, the most secure system is a system that is shut down, but that doesn't deter us from using different systems to help us out in our daily lives. And the same should be the case for smart devices. Instead, we can ensure we understand how our smart devices work and have an adequate security setup for them. Although different IoT and smart devices use various programming languages depending on the platform and vendor, they often need to speak the same language to be able to communicate with each other. For example, while IoT devices might use C++ or Java to talk to the compiler and the underlying hardware, they'll need a language on top of it like HTTP or MQTT to talk to your system or mobile device. So what is MQTT? MQTT stands for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport. It is a language very commonly used in IoT devices for communication purposes. It works on a publish subscribe model where any client device can publish messages and other client devices can then subscribe to the messages if they're related to a topic of interest. MQTT broker connects the different clients and publishing and subscribing the messages. So here we can see a visual example so the sensors will publish the values, that will be the temperature, 30 degrees Celsius, and the topic tells them what they're publishing, so their temperature. Same here, moisture, or same here for like the amount of acceleration. And this even works for things like valves. So in this case, the publish is 30, it's subscribed to temp, this one here, and it's also publishing that the valve is closed. To further understand MQTT, let's explore some key concepts used in these protocols. MQTT clients are IoT devices, such as sensors and controllers that publish or subscribe to messages using the MQTT protocol. For example, a temperature sensor can be a client that publishes temperature sensors at different places. An HVAC controller can also act as a client that subscribes to messages from the temperature sensor and turns the HVAC system on or off, depending on the input received. This val is subscribed to temp, which is this one here, and it makes decisions based on the output from this sensor here. So what it's saying is that this valve will react 
depending on the sensor. MQTT broker, that's the thing in the middle. An MQTT broker receives messages from publishing clients and distributes them to the subscribing clients based on their preferences. This is publish 30 degrees, topic temperature. This has subscribed to temperature. So when we hear something from this, we're going to also send it to this valve. MQTT topics. Topics are used to classify the different types of messages. Clients can subscribe to messages based on their topics of interest. For example, a temperature sensor sending temperature readings can use the topic of room temperature, while an HVAC controller would subscribe to messages under the topic of room temperature. However, a light sensor can publish messages with the topic light readings. An HVAC controller does not need to subscribe to this topic. On the other hand, a light controller would subscribe to light readings, but not the topic of room temperature. Our valve doesn't care about the moisture necessarily or the accelerometer here. It only cares about the temperature sensor, so we don't need to send it any other data. It means that this can continue to be very lightweight. Okay, so let's get started and actually have a look at this. So today we're going to need the virtual machine, but not the attack box. So I'm just going to press start machine and it's going to appear split screen mode. And I'm just going to wait for this to load. Okay, so we are up with the virtual machine for this. So we're going to start out in the terminal and we're just going to access our desktop and then tsim, which is the directory we're going to be using for this task. So if we look at tree here, we can see we've got two directories here. The first is challenge and the second one is walkthrough. So we're going to start out at the walkthrough because that's going to show us like how we start to analyze this protocol. And then we'll look at the challenge so we can figure out the flag and actually find something. So let's start out by actually starting up Wireshark. So throughout this, we're going to be using Wireshark. Wireshark will allow us to monitor the network connection and see what our computer is sending. So I'm gonna have it listen on any, and there's gonna be a ton of stuff here. Like you can see it constantly going. Now we need to filter this because most of this is not MQTT traffic. So we're gonna do MQTT up here and it will filter out all MQTT traffic. Now, obviously there's nothing there because there's nothing running. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the walkthrough sh script. And this is going to start up a bunch of different windows. So we've got the red text, the blue text, and the user interface here. This is the actual interface that you would interact with as a user. Now, this is the HVAC system, and this is the MQTT broker. So this is the one which is doing the middle manning, if you like. And then we can press these buttons and stuff can happen. We can experiment, say the target temperature is... 22 degrees, confirm temperature, then make sure it's on automatic, and you can see the temperature is slowly rising. So if we have a look in Wireshark here, we can begin to see what is actually being sent here. So the very first thing we see, it's a connect command. And then we can see this event and this event are the connection. So this is the command, and then this is the acknowledge of the command. These next two, the subscribe request and the subscribe app, is the request to subscribe to, in this case, home temperature, and then the confirmation that's occurred. Then we can see down here, we've got a subscribe to home temperature set, and here we have the subscribe. And then down here at the publishers, we could also see home heater and home temperature. So if we take a look at the published message for home temperature, we can go down here and see what is actually sending. So here is the topic and here is the message. So in this case, the message is minus six. So it's very cold. And if we have a look at the heater being switched on, we can see this is the topic, it's home heater. And this is the message, which is 6F6E, which is actually just the word on. So this is the overall communication here. So the temperature sensor, publishes the temperature, then the heat controller subscribes to the temperature, and then it also publishes heater on or heater off. So we can begin to look at what the heater is doing by looking at these publish messages. So we can see the temperature is changing, so it's getting warmer, minus one, and we can see um, we have 196, so basically two, and here we can see 
the home temperature being set as 22. Now you can see here we've got the like bytes here, which is slightly different from what we're actually sending. Great, we've figured out how this works. So let's take a look at the challenge next. So next thing to do is make sure you close everything down. Make sure you close all of the little tools up here. So let's take a look at the challenge. We're going to CD up and into challenge. And then we're going to do challenge sh. Now this is going to do the same thing, but this is going to run our challenge instead. So we we'll see if we have a look at the little light controller here, we can see Socmus light controller. We can see an off time and an on time, and we can switch light on and off. If we press the button though, nothing happens. So how do we begin to investigate? We're going to start up by starting up Wireshark. And then we're going to go File, Open, and we're going to go to Challenge, PCAP. And this is going to then show us a kind of sample of one we made earlier. Now I'm going to start by filtering the MQTT again. And we can see we start to narrow down the options. So what are we looking for here? We're looking to switch the lights on and off. So something in here has got to be the light switching on. So now what we can do is if we can find out what we need to set it to, we can go and use Mosquito Pub to send the on command directly. The problem is when we need to send this, we need to know the topic and the message. If from before our topics were things like home heater, so we need to figure out what it is now. And then we need to look for what an on message looks like. So the first thing to do is just start by exploring. So we can see a subscribe request. So if we have a look, we can see the topic here and we've got a random collection of letters and numbers. What does that suggest? Well, that could be the topic for the lights. We need to confirm it though. We need to take a look and find a publish where we've set it to be on. So if I just take a quick look, I can see there's a lot of random text here and there's a lot of random messages. So I'm just going to keep on exploring and seeing until I notice something. So here's the first thing I notice. Here I can see this message is 2200. If I take a look at our interface here, we can see that is the off time. Okay, we're getting somewhere. This is probably the off time, so it's not what we're looking for at the moment. We need to find the on message. So we can keep on exploring until we see a familiar message. So here you can see we've got this 6F6E. And if we just code that, we have the word on. So great, that means that this is the topic we need to send. So we're going to open our terminal here. And we're going to go and do a mosquito publish, then h2 localhost, then the topic. So the topic, we're just going to copy from this here, copy value, go back into the terminal, paste it. And then we know the message, we want to just send the word on. We're literally just sending this message again, this on message. We're going to press enter. And then we need to go look at the nice little interface and we can see the lights are on and we have got the flag. So we're going to go into here and do chm light on day save. And that is day 24 done. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to learn more about Wireshark, you can actually see the full Wireshark unit on TryHackMe. They have a ton of different tutorials that breaks down this interface. Wireshark is such a useful tool but it is very overwhelming to see what your computer is actually sending. So I really like how it breaks down what the packets actually were and how to actually read and understand things. If you've enjoyed Advent of Cyber, thank you so much. I have had a great time being a creator for Advent of Cyber. It's my number one thing I do during the Christmas period. It's not actual Christmas, it's Advent of Cyber. Thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you in the next videos. Bye, everyone.